Tunnels that disappear beneath oceans to cities built by cutting down entire mountain ranges, China isn't just building infrastructure, it's bending the very laws of physics and rewriting what's possible on this planet. But before we reveal the jaw-dropping truth behind the megastructure shaking up global engineering, hit that subscribe button because what you're about to witness might just change everything you know about infrastructures. In 1949, the People's Republic of China inherited a nation with more ruins than roads. Its railway network stretched a mere 21,000 kilometers on paper. In reality, nearly half of it was unusable, scarred by decades of war, occupation, and disrepair. Bridges had collapsed, rail beds were warped, and signaling systems were non-existent in many regions. Roads, where they existed, were dusty ribbons of gravel, narrow, broken, and disconnected. The vast interior of China was isolated, with entire provinces virtually cut off from modern commerce or mobility. Fast forward to today, and the contrast is staggering. China now boasts the world's largest high-speed rail network over 45,000 kilometers, enough to circle the Earth. It has over 180,000 bridges, including some of the longest and tallest on the planet. Its expressway system, which didn't even exist before 1988, now covers more than 177,000 kilometers, with an additional 16,000 kilometers being added every single year, the equivalent of building a road from Beijing to London annually. But this transformation wasn't ornamental. It was strategic, surgical, and relentless. Beijing understood early on that infrastructure wasn't just concrete and steel. It was sovereignty, security, and survival. Roads were veins, bridges were lungs, railways were the spinal cord of a country being reborn. The goal was clear, connect every town to a city, every city to a port, every port to the world. If Mao built ideology, then modern China built mobility. The scale of investment is unprecedented. Between 2011 and 2020 alone, China spent over $7 trillion on infrastructure, more than the US did in over a century. This created what many now call the infrastructure state, a nation whose national identity is as much about mega projects as it is about monuments. And this new identity has become the blueprint for others. Nations from Africa to South America now look east, not west, for how to build a nation at scale. Because what China did was not just rebuild itself, it redrew the map of what's possible. If you want to see China's rise etched in steel, look no further than the Hutong Yangtze River Bridge. This isn't just a bridge, it's a redefinition of the word connection. Opened in 2020, this 11 kilometer megastructure connects Nangtong to Shanghai, slicing through the mighty Yangtze like a scalpel through water. But the real marvel lies in the middle. The main span, stretching 1,092 meters, makes it the first railroad cable stayed bridge in the world with a span exceeding 1 kilometer. To hold that weight, engineers erected two diamond-shaped towers, each soaring 330 meters into the sky, taller than the Eiffel Tower. But height was only part of the challenge. Each tower had to endure axial forces of 300,000 tons, roughly equivalent to suspending three U.S. Navy aircraft carriers from a single cable. To root these giants, engineers sank 15,000 ton caissons into the silty Yangtze bed, anchoring them with surgical precision across 5,100 square meters, an area larger than an airport terminal. To combat shifting sediments and tidal forces, they deployed precision control platforms guided by satellite and sonar arrays, achieving alignment accuracy down to millimeters. The cables that suspend the bridge aren't just strong, they're revolutionary. Developed entirely in China, these 2,000 MPA grade stay cables are among the most tensile ever used. Each one can withstand the tension of a passenger plane at full throttle, and there are 216 of them. Altogether, the bridge used 2.3 million cubic meters of concrete and 480,000 tons of steel, the same mass as 65 Eiffel Towers. The numbers don't tell the whole story. Before this bridge, a journey from Nangtong to Shanghai took over 5 hours. Today, it takes less than one. That's not just a time reduction, it's a regional transformation. Freight moves faster, labor markets are unified, cities once considered peripheral are now economic hubs. At the southern gateway to China's Pearl River Delta lies a project so audacious it defies the very limits of maritime engineering, the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge. Stretching 55 kilometers, it's the longest sea crossing in the world, connecting three cities, three economies, 
and three political system, but its most surreal component lies hidden beneath the waves. A 6.7 kilometer immersed tunnel, the longest of its kind on Earth. Why go underwater? The South China Sea above is a thundering corridor of global trade. Thousands of cargo ships cut through this route daily. Above that, the airspace of Hong Kong International Airport, one of the busiest in the world. A surface bridge here would have been catastrophic. The solution? Die below the chaos. Enter the Bridge Tunnel Island Hybrid. Chinese engineers built two artificial islands, each stabilized with advanced vibro compaction and steel reinforcements, anchoring the transition points between bridge and tunnel. Then came the real challenge, the tunnel itself. They used 33 massive immersed tubes, each 180 meters long, 38 meters wide, and weighing a jaw-dropping 74,000 tons. Imagine moving 33 fully loaded aircraft carriers and placing them end to end underwater. The real feat? The error margin for joining these tubes was just 3 millimeters. Engineers used a combination of laser alignment, GPS guided hydraulic jacks, and pressure equalizing ballast tanks to position each segment perfectly. It was a ballet of machines beneath the sea. And sealing the joints? Traditional underwater welding was too risky, so they invented an entirely new method. Active compression sealing. Think of it like airlocking a spaceship. Retractable steel bulkheads compress rubber gaskets under the hydraulic force, creating an airtight, watertight seal without a single diver entering the water. The result? A tunnel built 10 times faster than any previous immersed sea project. Today, over 100,000 vehicles traverse this corridor daily, slashing travel time between Hong Kong and Zhuhai from 4 hours to just 45 minutes. But the bigger story is geopolitical. This bridge physically binds the Pearl River Delta into a unified economic engine with a GDP of over $2 trillion, larger than most nations. It's been called the most surreal infrastructure project on Earth, and it deserves that title. The Shenzhen Zongshang link isn't just a connection between two booming economic zones. It's a symphony of structural impossibilities made real. Stretching a colossal 24 kilometers across the Pearl River Delta, the Lynx Crown Jewel is a 6.8 kilometer undersea tunnel, currently the world's longest and widest immersed tunnel ever attempted in open ocean conditions. Unlike traditional tunnel designs, which shy away from wide multi-lane profiles due to stability risks, this project features eight full lanes, four in each direction, flowing seamlessly beneath one of the busiest maritime corridors in Asia. Western engineers once scoffed at the idea, some even called it a fantasy. But China didn't just make it work, it rewrote the physics of tunnel engineering. The secrets lie in a radical structural innovation known as the steel concrete sandwich. Think of it as the infrastructure version of bone armor. Massive steel plates are fused with high density concrete in a configuration that multiplies flexural rigidity by an astounding 400%. This means the tunnel doesn't just resist collapse, it adapts under pressure. It bends, adjusts, and holds. The breakthrough was so unprecedented that it forced the American Society of Civil Engineers to update their international design code, retrofitting a new rulebook to account for Chinese ingenuity. Each of the 32 prefabricated tunnel segments, weighing 80,000 tons apiece, roughly equivalent to a fully loaded aircraft carrier, was floated out and precisely submerged with millimeter level accuracy. Anchoring these behemoths required 552 sacrificial anodes per tube, custom designed to corrode in place of the steel, extending the tunnel's life expectancy beyond 100 years. But the true revelation hides inside the concrete. Embedded within the tunnel's very bones are 23,000 fiber optic sensors, which are hair-thin threads that pulse with light. They read stress, temperature, vibration, even the microfractures that human eyes could never see. If the tunnel begins to strain under tidal pressure or seismic shifts, the sensors trigger alerts. Repairs could be made proactively long before visible cracks can form. This isn't just smart engineering, it's sensory architecture. The Shenzhen Zongshang Link isn't just built to last, it's built to feel. As Nature Magazine put it in awe, China has taught concrete how to think. Upstream, where the land buckles and the river surges with primeval power, stands a fortress of water and stone. By heat and hydropower station rises 289 meters above the Jinsha River like a titan from myth. It isn't just a dam, it's an assertion of control over one of the world's most dangerous and dynamic waterways. Engineered at a staggering cost of $26 billion, 
Bahitan is part of a strategic hydrological alliance stretching downriver. Alongside the Wu Dong Di and Jing Jai Ba dams, it forms a power producing triad, an interconnected hydropower matrix capable of delivering up to 300 billion kilowatt hours per year. That's enough electricity to light up every home in France, but its impact goes far beyond illumination. By replacing what would otherwise require 90 million tons of coal annually, Bahitan slashes carbon emissions by 248 million tons, a number that reverberates across climate agreements and energy forums worldwide. It is a clean energy giant operating in silence, humming beneath the surface while powering cities, railways, and factories far downstream. Yet Bahitan isn't only about energy, it's also a gatekeeper, regulating floods that once ravaged entire provinces. With a reservoir that can hold 2,600 cubic kilometers of water, 8 million Olympic swimming pools worth, it acts as both an engine and a shield. During monsoon season, it absorbs the fury of the Yangtze. During drought, it releases life-sustaining flow. Constructing such a behemoth required digging deep into granite gorges and threading turbines through layers of shifting geology. The project called upon over 100,000 workers and over a decade of planning, tunneling, and building. The scale was biblical, yet the outcome was surgical. China didn't just tame the river, it reshaped the geography of power in every sense. Bahitan stands today as a quiet colossus. No press conference could capture the magnitude of what it does hour by hour. It doesn't scream achievement, it radiates it. At the edge of the Gobi Desert, where wind howls through stone canyons and nothing but rocks seem to endure, China decided to build a city. Not a town, not a camp, a city. And not on the land, but through it. Lanzhou New Area was once a desolate expanse of unyielding terrain choked by 700 craggy hills and inhospitable slopes. It was deemed unsuitable for large-scale habitation by foreign analysts. But China didn't wait for permission from the terrain, it issued a challenge. Over 700 million cubic meters of soil and stone were carved, moved, and flattened. Hilltops were demolished. Valleys were filled. In less than a decade, the once barred region was transformed into a master plan metropolis covering 86 square kilometers, an urban canvas larger than Manhattan. The result is astonishing. Lanzhou New Area now pulses with life. Multi-lane highways stretch in grid-like order, subways hum beneath the surface, medical centers rise in clinical precision, and residential towers gleam in desert sunlight. Over 3.5 million people call this place home. It's not just built, it's self-sustaining. Solar arrays feed the grid. Water recycling systems service neighborhoods. Logistics parks, industrial clusters, and tech campuses work in sync. Lanzhou isn't a monument to growth, it's an ecosystem of possibility. By 2035, the city is projected to inject over $27 billion annually into China's GDP, roughly the economic output of a small European nation. But beyond the numbers, Lanzhou proves something more profound. China no longer waits for nature to offer opportunity. If the terrain resists, it is reshaped. If the mountains won't yield, they are moved. In the heart of Guangzhou, amid the hum of commerce and the thrum of progress, stands a building that doesn't merely house performances, it performs. The Guangzhou Opera House, with its fluid, asymmetrical form, appears less like a man-made structure and more like a geological formation forged by time and water. Designed by the legendary Zaha Hadid, its sweeping lines and contoured facade were inspired by the twin forces of nature, erosion and flow. The result? A space where architecture and acoustics merge in something living, breathing, and resonant. Inside, 1,800 seats are arranged with mathematical precision, creating an acoustic envelope so refined that not a whisper, a string pluck, or a breath from a soloist goes unheard. The materials, granite, glass, steel, are chosen not only for visual harmony, but for their ability to absorb, reflect, and channel sound. The theater doesn't just contain music, it amplifies emotion. Costing $200 million to realize, the Guangzhou Opera House is more than a venue, it's a cultural proclamation. A signal to the world that China is no longer merely catching up in global art and design, but taking the lead. And it doesn't stand alone. In the snow-laced city of Harbin, another opera house rises from the icy plains like a shard of frozen light. 
draped in 30,000 reflective aluminum panels, the Harbin Opera House mirrors the horizon itself, shimmering by day, glowing by night. Piercing through the clouds and reshaping the skyline of Shanghai is a tower that doesn't just stretch upward, it spirals towards the future. The Shanghai Tower, rising 632 meters, is not merely a building, it is a vertical city. And like a city, it has its rhythms, retail at its base, offices at mid-height, luxury hotels and observation decks crowning the summit. Every 12 to 15 floors are grouped into self-contained neighborhoods, each equipped with its own sky garden, air circulation system, and energy controls. But its brilliance lies not only in scale, but in form. The 120 degree twist of its structure, a feat that challenged even the most advanced parametric modeling tools, serves a higher purpose. That spiral design reduces wind load by nearly a quarter, saving millions in materials and structural stress. The double skin facade, meanwhile, creates a thermal buffer zone, allowing natural ventilation and reducing energy consumption by up to 21%. South of Beijing, where old dynasties once planned the future from walled cities, now rises a gateway to the next century. Beijing Daxing International Airport isn't just an airport, it's a revolution in air travel. Designed by Zaha Hadid Architects, its signature starfish shape isn't a stylistic flourish. It's a master stroke and movement. Each of its radial arms directs passengers efficiently from check-in to gate, minimizing walking time and maximizing flow. No gate is more than an 8 minute walk away, a staggering achievement for a terminal that spans over 700,000 square meters. Costing $63 billion and designed to eventually handle over 100 million passengers annually, Daxing is engineered not just for scale, but for speed. Below the terminal, high-speed rail links connect directly into China's national network, allowing travelers to step off a plane and onto a train in minutes. Above, four runways, expandable to six, allow near-continuous takeoffs and landings, keeping pace with the demands of the world's most populous nation. The airport is smart, equipped with biometric check-ins, automated baggage systems, and AI-driven traffic control. It doesn't just serve passengers, it anticipates them. It's a structure built not only to impress, but to think. Across the vast body of China, mountains rise, rivers divide, and cities once stood isolated by terrain and time. Then came a rail line that rewrote everything. The Beijing-Guangzhou High-Speed Railway is the longest of its kind in the world, a 2,298-kilometer line that fuses north and south, past and present. Before, a journey along this axis took 22 hours by conventional train. Today, it's completed in just eight. Not by magic, but by steel. The railway is stitched together with over 60 million tons of it, traversing 20,000 kilometers of supporting track laid across viaducts, tunnels, and embankments that had to conquer nature's every obstacle. It links six provinces and more than 80 cities, threading together a population of over half a billion. Trains fly across the landscape at speeds over 300 kilometers an hour, yet do so with a reliability that rivals even Tokyo's famous bullet trains. And at a cost of $234 billion, this wasn't just infrastructure, it was ambition made tangible. The infrastructure maniac's future. Every bridge, every tunnel, every tower. These are more than engineering marvels. They're symbols of willpower, of a country that doesn't ask if it can be done, but asks when. Chinese engineers have built heavenly ladders in the mountains, dragons beneath the sea, and roads that bend the laws of terrain. While the world debates how, China acts, and in doing so, it redefines not only its own destiny, but the very fabric of modern civilization. So the only question that remains is, what miracle will China build next? Share your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching this video with us, and catch you in the next one.